Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So we've got the side-by-side -side in the shop today and the side-by-side -side is probably the most used tool that we have on this farm. There's not a day goes by that somebody doesn't jump in this thing to go feed, to you know, haul something, go get the mail, whatever maybe. There's not a day goes by that we don't use this thing. But we also use this as a rolling toolbox. And I want to talk a little bit about the tools that we carry in this today and maybe help you decide some things that you need to put in your side by side on your farm uh, to get your chores done. So stick around with us for a little bit. Let's do a little bit of a tool review on what we carry in the side by side. All right, so our uh, Kawasaki mule has a, uh, has a well, we call it a frunk. It's part, it's in the front, but it's a trunk. And in here, we've got um, just a number of things that we carry. Let's let's get all this out, throw it up on the bench, and talk about what all's in here, why we decided to use it, and what we think that we'll use it for. All right, so one of the problems that we've had from day one is that side-by-side -side <clears throat> ended up being, it was kind of the junk drawer. It was kind of the junk drawer of the farm. It was... You know, stuff would just get tossed in there. It would end up on the bottom and tools would get rusty and they just, it was, it was inoperable. I mean, it was just, it was just a mess. So when Jamie came to work um, and started working for us, he said, you know, we need to come up with just a toolkit of things that we need in the side by side on a day to day basis, figure out how to organize it and then go from there. So he and I talked a little bit about it and kind of came up with what we think is, are the essentials. Now, I don't know that this is going to be the end of what we have in here. I think this will probably change over time, but I think, you know, we've probably got a pretty good start. And if there's something that you can think of that we've not thought of that you think would be good to keep in the side by side on a day to day basis, drop that in the comments down below because, you know, we think this is what we need. And so far it's worked out pretty good, but we may, we may need other things. So we're just going to go through everything, tell you what we got and why we've got it and what we think the purpose behind it is. So the first thing here we've got is a um, socket set, half inch drive. Um, it also includes a, um, a screwdriver with all different types of heads, flats, uh, Phillips, some square bits and star bits as well. Uh, we've got short well sockets and deep well uh, for just whatever you may run into on a day-to-day -day basis, tighten up different bolts, anything like that out there. And this is a socket set that I had here in the shop that had, I don't even, I don't, I honestly don't remember where it came from and we'd never used it for anything, so it seemed like a, seemed like a good option to just throw it in there. So, um, the next thing that we got is, um, and I'm going to leave some links in the description down below for some of these things. Some of this stuff came from Harbor Freight, others, other pieces of it came from different places. But another thing that we thought that we needed was just a good pry bar. Um, you know, there's lots of occasions whenever you're out and something is stuck or you're trying to get an implement on a tractor and you just need to get a little bit of leverage and, you know, just a plain screwdriver is not going to do it. So, um, we got, I think that's a 14 inch, uh, just a 14 inch pry bar and, uh, that's brand new. I got that at Harbor Freight and so that's, uh, we thought that would be a good thing to have in there. Yeah. Another thing with the pry bar, it's always great, um, uh, whenever you're hooking up stuff to your PTO on your tractor, um, Sometimes you just can't get enough leverage with your hands. So that's an easy thing to slip through that U-joint and uh, kind of align it up there. Yep. Uh, so we've got two different size of uh, zip ties here, and we use zip ties for all kinds of things. <laughs> uh, zip tie construction is what we're great at around here. Uh, so we used them a lot on the chicken tractors here recently and all, kinds of, all other sorts of uh, uses that we'll have for them in the future. Yeah, zip ties, you know, like the piglet pin. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll tie... Um, pig panels to just our drive in T post or our step in post just to set up a, a piglet pin. So, you know, we use T post for, or we use zip ties for all kinds of things. Um, we got a dead blow hammer um, with uh, it's a two pound hammer full of shot. Um, that's a brand new piece. We got that at Tractor Supply. Again, you know, sometimes you just need something to, you know, pound on a, a, an implement or uh, drive a post in the ground or something like that. This is rubber or plastic. I don't know how long it's going to last but uh, we thought that a dead blow hammer would be a handy thing to have around too. So a uh, utility knife, of course, uh, gets used on a daily basis also. Um, anything from castrating piglets <laughs> to 
uh, cutting off zip tie ins, uh, opening bags of feed, anything you can think of. Yep. Yeah. Um, we got a can of uh, uh, blaster. We call it Slickem. Um, you know, if you've got a, a, a nut that's uh, resting onto something, or you need a little bit extra lubrication for, you know, whatever, um, little pe uh, just a, a, a can of uh, penetrating oil, PB blaster. Uh, WD-40 would work. Um, there's a lot of different brands out there. I think this is what was on sale at uh, Rural King last time I was there. So um, just just a can of uh, lubricant. So I uh, got a 25 foot tape measure. Uh, always great for uh, whenever you're out. And if you get into a project that's uh, too big uh, to just what these tools can handle out in the field, you can always measure stuff, come back to the shop, take those measurements and cut whatever you need here and take it back out with you. So another good thing to have in your toolkit. Claw hammer, um, you know, pretty self-explanatory. This is an old claw hammer. I don't know how long I've had it. It's a Jim Dandy brand. I mean, it's, it's just an old claw hammer. Um, driving nails, pulling nails, uh, you know, we've got a lot of different buildings and things around here and uh, sometimes, you know, there's a nail in a wall or you need to drive a nail or something like that. These also work great on those little metal uh, posts that we drive in the ground. Um, you know, probably would work better than the, than the dead blow hammer, but uh, yeah, just a claw hammer, just for general pounding and beating kind of things. This uh, Hercules brand drill battery is up here. Uh, what's not shown on here is the Hercules drill. We usually keep that hooked up to the drill pump that we use to draft water out of the creek with. Uh, but we swap these out almost daily and, and go through quite a few of them, just getting everybody watered and everything. So we, we keep one on hand. Um, tie downs, I've got two different tie downs, uh, two different sizes. Uh, one is uh, a little bit thicker than the other. You know, tie downs are great for just securing stuff in place. If we're gonna haul something on the side by side, um, you know, we can strap it down if we need to uh, you know, strap down a tarp around a, a well head or something like that. You know, just I've got a couple out there for that now. <clears throat> but uh, tie down straps, uh, ratchet straps, you never know whenever you're going to need to just secure something. So those are just left in the side by side for uh, whenever the occasion arises. So we've got a pair of uh, wire cutters down here, um, a little bit smaller of a kind here. These are great for cutting small pieces of galvanized wire. Uh, probably not great for cutting high tensile. We've got the uh, needle nose pliers for that if we need them, but uh, just a, a small pair of wire cutters is good to have around. You never know what you're gonna get into out on the farm, what you need to cut your way through whenever you're out there, so. And this was a, this was a hotly contested item. I wanted, the, I wanted the standard and Jamie wanted the metric, but we uh, adjustable wrench, so we ended up with the, with the combination. <laughs> Um, this is just a little adjustable wrench. Um, found this again. This was another. Um, this was another uh, Harbor Freight purchase. Um, you know, just for grabbing a hold of bolts, um, nuts, moving and twisting things off. You know, if we can't get a hold of it with a with a socket or uh, something like that. So just an adjustable wrench for general purposes for uh, nuts and bolts. So we got a uh, flathead and a Phillips screwdriver here. Um, in addition to what we have over here, these are just good to have on hand. We keep them on the outside of the tool bag so they're easy to get to. Uh, never know what you're going to run into as far as taking a screw off somewhere. The um, drinker that's attached to uh, Cinnamon's water bowl out there has some uh, flathead screws in it. So it's just good to have uh, a flat and a Phillips always handy. These kind of go together as well. Uh, these are just a couple of... Uh, um, adjustable wrenches, uh, and I got these at, um, I got both of these at Harbor Freight as well. These are uh, Doyle brand, um, and they were, they weren't very expensive, but the, the quality on them, I mean, they feel good, they feel like they're substantial, but just having a couple of these uh, adjustables are great for um, pr primarily water. I mean, that's where I see that these would be, uh, have the most use is whenever we're trying to attach or take apart a water line or water hose or something like that. But just a couple of these and, and you know, really this kind of become, this, uh, this almost, these two items right here almost become an entire toolkit in and of themselves because, you know, no matter what size bolt head you've got, what size nuts you've got, I mean, that's probably, that's what a good two inches, maybe two and a half yeah. inches throat. Um, so these end up really becoming kind of a, a, a tool, you know, a, a tool bag in and of themselves. But just a couple of, uh, you know, just a couple of those wrenches that, can adjust the, the, uh, the throat zone 
and uh, you know tighten or loosen a, a big fitting. Last up here is this set of needle nose pliers. Uh, they've also got a, a cutting portion in them too. Uh, great for getting in tight spaces uh, that other stuff can't get in. Whenever you've got to bend some wire or push something in a in a small space, they're great to get in there. Also good for cutting uh, bob wire or uh, high tensile as well. Yep. So, you know, this, again, this is probably not a comprehensive toolkit, but, you know, we kind of talked about it and thought, well, these are the things that we're going to need the most. And, you know, if we get into something that we can't handle here, it's probably going to be a project that we've got to bring back to the shop or we're going to have to come get other tools anyway, power tools. Um, the only power tool that we've got, you know, we do keep the, that drill uh, in the buggy for the, uh, for the drill pump. But uh, other than that, you know, I'm afraid just carrying batteries around, they're going to get mucky and nasty and dirty and, you know, damaged and that kind of thing. Part of this, you know, we had some of this stuff on hand. We did buy a few items, but um, we didn't spend just a ton of money. This is probably, out, you know, not counting the, the DeWalt um, socket set. This is, you know, probably less than 50 bucks. Um, we'd also got a, we did get a bag to kind of keep things in because, the front of that thing does get mucky and nasty and dirty and a lot of grime. There were, yeah. some, there were some of these tools <laughs> that we, when we pulled them out, this was already, this was in there to begin with. This thing was covered in rust. I mean, it wasn't even open with it. No. So we put, uh, just took some of that uh, rust away stuff, dipped it in there for a couple of days and then sprayed it with a little bit of slicker. And so now we're good to go. All right, so that is our tool bag, tool kit for our side-by-side. Uh, again, if you think of something that we don't have that you think might be uh, beneficial to us, leave us a comment in the, uh, drop us a comment down below. Anything else? No, uh, just uh, saying that this is just kind of what fits us for right now. It may increase later. Oh, yeah. You may need to increase it based on whatever you're doing around your farm or decrease it, I mean, if you don't need to carry this much. Yeah. It's just kind of what easily fits in the front of our buggy and... Uh, what we see that we will be using on a daily basis. Yep, absolutely. All right, like we always say, please remember to keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your family. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.